Most video cameras will include a microphone and will record an audio track with your video. In nearly all cases, the camera's onboard microphone will be fairly low quality. That means the audio will also be low quality. Simply put, you can't expect too much from that little pinhole mic on your DSLR or smartphone camera. Let's take a quick look at what you can do to capture better audio. I found that the audio is better on my Handycam, but in that case, the omnidirectional microphone picks up sounds behind the camera, including my breathing and conversations to my rear. I once lost virtually all usable airplane audio when there was someone talking on the phone behind me and it was all captured by the omnidirectional mic on my Handycam. With that in mind, let's talk external microphones. First, let's take a quick look at the microphone's pickup patterns. You'll be dealing with three primary patterns. First is the omnidirectional mic. It collects sounds from all 360 degrees around the mic's opening. The problem is what I described a second ago. Sound from outside the camera's view is also recorded and it might be distracting or unrelated to the video. This is less of a problem with omnidirectional lavalier mics that are pinned to someone's shirt or lapel. That's because the speaker's body blocks most of the sound from the rear. The next pickup pattern is called a cardioid pattern. The root word here is the same as cardiologist, that is heart. The pickup pattern for a cardioid mic is heart-shaped, with the lobes of the heart near the mic's opening and the point of the heart pointing towards the forward area. Sounds from inside the pattern will be picked up and sound outside the pattern will be suppressed or not picked up. Mics with this type pattern allow you to focus your sound gathering on the direction your mic is pointing while limiting other sounds. The final pickup pattern I'll mention is hypercardioid. As the word hyper suggests, this pattern is also heart-shaped, but the side lobes are smaller and the heart's point extends further out. Think of a long skinny heart shape. Mics with this pattern also have a small pickup area pointed rearward. Handheld or stand mounted mics with these cardioid patterns will focus on the sound in front, such as a speaker or singer, and still pick up some of the sound reflections in the room for a sense of the space. You'll also notice two categories of mics that you can choose from. First are the dynamic mics. The easy way to think about these mics is that they are unpowered. They don't need batteries or what is sometimes called phantom power to convert the sound vibrations they capture into signals that can travel down the mic cable. Dynamic mics are usually quite rugged. Second are condenser mics. These mics do require power. You'll find some have small battery boxes attached to the mic cord or the mic may plug into a small box that includes a battery. Larger condenser mics get their power from the recording device or mixer they plug into. These mics require voltage across the mic sensor to translate the sound vibrations into signals that travel down the cable to the camera or recorder. Condenser mics are more delicate, especially large ones. With the power and pickup patterns in mind, let's take a quick look at mic styles or types, particularly the ones you'll be considering for shooting RC videos. If your video shooting includes build or assembly logs, you'll probably be looking at a lavalier mic. These mics are often omnidirectional, but can be found with cardioid patterns too. The lav can be either wired or wireless. Obviously, wireless mics cost a bunch more. They can also be either dynamic or condenser style. Condenser mics have stronger output and better sensitivity, but are more delicate. 
Large condenser mics are usually studio-only mics. However, a powered lav mic can be a fine outdoors or on location mic too. You may have to raise the gain setting on your recorder's or camera's audio settings to get an acceptable level of sound from a dynamic lav mic. Most lav mics for smartphones are condenser mics, which means the smartphone provides the voltage even without a battery attached to the mic. For your in-flight videos, you'll be looking at a shotgun style mic. These are the long, slender mics you'll see mounted on cameras, hot shoes, or cold shoe brackets. A shotgun mic will be a condenser mic requiring power. Most of the time, that means a battery loaded into the mic itself. Shotgun mics have a cardioid or hypercardioid pickup pattern. In fact, their patterns are more tightly configured with a great deal of sound rejection from the sides of the mic. This narrow pattern will allow you to hear the model even at a distance while blocking some of the chatter around you. A camera mounted shotgun mic is great for ambient sound, but it falls short when recording dialogue. Unless you mount your shotgun mic on a boom or use a lavalier mic for dialogue, your speaker will sound distant and flat. That's not a failure of the microphone, it's just the reality of recording dialogue. If you're interested in spoken words and not a lot of ambient sound, you need to have the mic close to the speaker's mouth. Since your plan is to use a shotgun mic outside, you'll want to add wind noise protection. Many, even inexpensive, shotgun mics come with foam windscreens. For even better wind suppression, you'll need to get one of the furry windscreens you often see on outdoor mics. These are often called dead cats. The long furry hairs on a dead cat mic sleeve will block a bunch of the noise wind makes when striking the mic while not seriously impacting the sound that you're after. For the beginning RC video shooter, a beginner quality lav mic and a shotgun mic are enough to get you started. You'll undoubtedly add mics to your collections later. You'll either be recording into your camera or a separate audio recorder. I've got a separate video that discusses that in more detail, so be sure to check out the recording audio video in this series. Some of the clips we're about to play show both techniques to give you a chance to hear the difference. Now, for a couple of recommendations and demos. Since much of your audio will be captured outside, I took several mics outside for some demos as well as some inside audio. The sun was pretty bright the day I shot the video, so there are some harsh shadows. But since the shots were about the sound, I went with them anyway. In these demos, I didn't do any audio corrections to the sound files, so you can hear them straight out of the mic and recorder combination. The audio you're listening to now is from the first demo mic, the AT3350. It was normalized and noise reduced in Audacity. Use this as a comparison to the raw audio and the easy improvements you can make post-production. Those improvements are described in more detail in the audio editing tips video that's also part of this series. In the lavalier category, two beginner models that work quite well are the Audio Technica ATR 3350IS and the ALAV Omnidirectional Condenser Lavalier Mic by Aperture. The ATR 3350 has been around for years and has been re-released with a pigtail connector allowing it to be plugged into smartphones. The lead from the mic is a TRS style that plugs into camera and recorder mic inputs. Since smartphones require a TRRS connector, the pigtail facilitates that connection. The ATR 3350 comes with nearly 20 foot cord, which makes it easy to use as a wired mic in build sessions or when standing a ways away from your camera while having the mic up close to your mouth. 
I've used this on a number of build videos as well as this video right now. On Amazon, it's under $25. Here are a couple of clips using the AT3350. Got the Audio Technica 3350 Lav mic, and it's a wired mic, so it's wired directly into the camera in the mic outlet uh, on the camera. Uh, the 3350 gives you about 20 feet of cord, and so this is about the distance that you'd be able to get from the camera using this wired lavalier mic, the Audio Technica 3350. Okay, in this clip, we've got the AT3350 connected to the Tascam DR60 Mark II digital recorder. So listen to see if you can see any difference between the recording as it goes into the digital recorder versus the recorder in the camera. The ALAV mic is of similar sound quality to the ATR3350 and costs just a bit more. Like the ATR3350, the ALAV has a small battery holder to power the condenser mic. Unlike the ATR3350, the battery is a rechargeable lithium battery and instead of an on-off switch, the ALAV turns on when the mic is plugged in. On the other end of the battery holder, the ALAV has outputs for the mic to the camera or recorder and another for headphones to monitor the recording. It also comes with output cables to feed recorders or smartphones giving you the choice of a TRS or TRRS connection. As a practical matter, I find the ability to disconnect from the ALAV a benefit. The ATR3350's 3, mic and 20 foot long cord are all one piece. If I need to refill my coffee or get something out of reach, I'd have to remove the mic from my clothing to get free of the tail. With the ALAV, I can just unplug. On the other hand, the ALAV will require you to get an additional length of cord separately, adding to the cost. Both sound much better than your camera's mic, especially since your camera's mic will be away from the speaker. Here are a couple of samples of the ALAV. The third clip will be from the camera's mic. You'll see there's quite a difference. So we've switched up mics and we've got the ALAV uh, lavalier mic from uh, Aperture. Uh, the difference here is that I've got it on an extension cord and so the distance from the camera is a little less because my extension was less than the one that came on the uh, Audio Technica. So listen to see if you can see any difference in the sound. I noticed in the meter, again, I've got the camera set on automatic for the microphone that the, uh, the sound volumes are probably higher in this case because I noticed that the little VU meter on the camera camera was going uh, quite a bit higher than it did with the ALAV. Something to think about. Obviously, that's something you could adjust. Now, one of the alternatives to a wireless microphone is using a small uh, digital audio recorder. This one happens to be the Tascam DR05. Another popular one is the Zoom H1. Both allow you to do the same things. You can record in a room using the built-in mics, but you can use it with a lav mic like I'm doing here with this ALAV uh, and use it instead of a wireless mic. Because the recording is being made here in the recorder, it doesn't matter where I go, the recorder's always with me. And so I can move around, the camera can follow me, I can turn my back to you, and the sound really doesn't change unless you pick up a little bit of the breeze here as I work down the green belt. So again, it doesn't matter. It allows you to have a great deal of motion. It's easy to hide. You can stick it in the small of your back or in a jacket pocket uh, or in the fold of some clothing because it's really not very big. And then you don't have to worry about perhaps the additional expense of a wireless mic. Okay, in this clip we've got, again, the ALAV from Aperture, uh, except we've wired it into the Tascam, and we've done it a little bit differently. In this case, we used a little Rode uh, 3.5 to XLR uh, adapter, and then we've got it connected to an XLR cable that gives it better shielding on the way to the recorder. Uh, and you can see that uh, you may see it as a balanced line, and so it should have a better sound quality. I also notice that I did some adjustments on the Tascam to get the recording level uh, to that minus 12 dB or so. Uh, and so that's the sound of the ALAV wired directly to the DR60 instead of to the camera. 
Okay, in this clip we've got, again, the ALAV from Aperture, uh, except we've wired it into the TASCAM, and we've done it a little bit differently. In this case, we used a little Rode uh, 3.5 to XLR uh, adapter, and then we've got it connected to an XLR cable that gives it better shielding on the way to the recorder. Uh, now for a couple of shotgun recommendations. Again, remember, we're talking about beginners, and we're talking about cheap. You can get better quality mics, but these will put you ahead of your fellow rookies when getting started. If you have access to more funds, do some additional research and you'll find more expensive models with better performance. My first shotgun recommendation is a bare-bones cheapo mic that produces surprisingly good sound, especially tracking your RC model around the sky. You can find it under a couple of brand names on Amazon.com. One is the newer 14.37 inch photography camera camcorder unidirectional system condenser shotgun interview mic. Wow, that's a mouthful. The other is the Best Deal USA 14.37 camera camcorder shotgun mic. It looks like any brand that comes up with 14.37 and shotgun mic in the search term displays the same microphone. This mic is battery powered and has a switch selectable on off cardioid and hypercardioid settings. They label the settings as off, normal and tele. Most vendors offer it at about $20. A second consideration is the Tacstar SGC 598 Photography Interview Shotgun Mic. This mic isn't nearly as long as the previous example. It too is battery powered and comes with foam windscreen. It's also fitted into a shock mount system to reduce the noise that comes from bumping the camera or the microphone mount. It also has a switch selectable low pass filter plus a 10 decibel boost along with a low battery LED. It comes in at about $25 to $30. Either of these cheapo mics will put you out in front of those using the camera mounted pinhole mics found on many DSLR cameras or the omnidirectional mics on a Handycam style camera. You can also connect them to boom poles or mic stands to position them for dialogue pickup during build logs or interviews. To do that, position the mic pointed toward the speaker about 16 to 20 inches away from their mouth. It's often best to place the mic above the speaker just out of the camera's frame. Here are a couple of audio clips using each shotgun mic as a boom mic. This sound check is on the Tacstar SGC 598 interview mic. I've got it set with the plus 10 gain on the little side switch on the microphone, and I have the low pass filter off on this particular sound check. This is a sound check of the Best Steel USA 14.3 inch camera camcorder shotgun microphone. The final clip provides a sense of the Tacstar and Best USA Shotgun's audio outdoors with both me speaking and just listening to the surrounding sound. This sound clip is with the Tacstar SGC 598 shotgun mic. I've got it mounted on a bracket on top of the camera with the foam windscreen on it and I've got the plus dB switch set as well. This gives you a sense of the kind of sound you can get vocally from this distance. Probably not as good as what you're going to get if you had the mic right on top of somebody. I'll be quiet now for just a second. You get a sense of the, the sound here in the neighborhood. In this clip we're using the Best USA 14.37 shotgun mic mentioned in the video. It's a much longer mic and I've got a dead cat windscreen sitting on top of the foam windscreen that comes with the microphone. Again, I'm 8 to 10 feet away from the microphone. It gives you a sense of the kind of audio you're going to get in terms of spoken words from this distance. Here is some of the ambient sounds in the neighborhood. 
This last demo is done using the ALAV EZ lavalier mic for smartphones and my Galaxy S5 smartphone. As I discuss in the recording audio video, using your smartphone with a lav mic is a great alternative to a wireless mic or for impromptu interviews. The ALAV's cord is also long enough to do a headshot using your smartphone's camera and a well-placed lav mic to upgrade your sound quality. One of the easy ways to try to uh, separate video and audio recording is to use your smartphone. I've got one of the free smartphone uh, recording apps from the Google Play Store. There's some on the iTunes Store as well. And then I'm using this lavalier mic from Aperture, the ALAV EZ, which is made for smartphone recording. It's got about, oh my goodness, a 10 foot cord. So you can uh, hide the smartphone, put the smartphone in your pocket, uh, in a jacket, small of your bag and use it to record as kind of a poor man's uh, wireless mic because you can turn around, walk around, and the audio isn't going to change because your relationship to the microphone isn't changing, although your relationship to the camera is. So this is the ALAV Easy, which is a great way to use your smartphone to figure out whether separate audio and video recording is for you. We're going to use it the same way as we might have used a DR05 from Tascam or a Zoom H1. Your mic is half the sound quality solution. Where the sound is recorded is the other half. That will be discussed more in the video called Recording Your Audio. Okay, you know the drill. Please click the thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. Be sure to click subscribe if you'd like to be notified when I post new videos to the RC Plain Views channel. Now, go out shopping, make a small investment that will pay big dividends on your videos audio quality.